Hello everybody, uh, this is Mr. Ash and I'm going to show you how to make a jack-o'-lantern in Fusion 360. So if you haven't used Fusion 360 before, uh, first I probably want to go over how to navigate a 3D scene, um, but that's a little hard without having something in 3D to look at. So we're going to kind of jump into modeling and then we're going to, uh, you know, then talk a little bit about more about the interface. So um, I'm going to be making a jack-o'-lantern I think I'm gonna do something a little cute, and I'm gonna make it like a like a box jack o' lantern instead, sort of like Minecraft, because uh, I like Minecraft. So I'm gonna start by creating a cube. So um, to create a cube, you actually need to create a 3D object. So um, to make a 3D object, you go into the Create menu. Okay. Um, you can also make 3D objects by sketching and extruding, and that's really the powerful thing about Fusion 360 or other CAD softwares. Um, but we're going to start with a cube because we um, want something to navigate around and because we can make it into a cute Minecraft jack-o'-lantern. So uh, I'm going to go click on box and I'm going to place the box on the ground plane. So I'm going to click on this uh, X, Y plane where the green and the red meet. I'm going to click right there. And now it's telling me to place the first corner. I'm going to place the first corner in the center and I'm going to bring it out and let's make it uh, 50 by 50 by 50. So I'll just say 50, press tab, 50, press tab, and then hit enter. And then where it goes to extrude, you just press 50. And what this operation really was, was um, creating a sketch and extruding it. Um, but if you use this operation, it's like a, it's like a script that basically avoids you making that extra sketch. So if you use these primitives, it helps you avoid unnecessary sketching, which is kind of good. So now that we've got a cube in our scene, we can navigate around. So um, middle mouse wheel allows you to pan. So if you just middle mouse wheel and move your mouse around, um, you will be panning around the scene. If you want to rotate the camera, you hold shift and then middle mouse wheel, and now you're rotating around. Now there's this little tiny green dot you see when you do this. And I think you can move that point by I think it's, oh, shift middle mouse wheel. Yeah, if you hold shift and click middle mouse wheel, you are, can then move that point you're rotating around. So let's say I'm trying to rotate over here. I can shift middle mouse wheel. Now it's over there. And now I'm rotating around that point. Okay, but if I want to rotate around the point right there on top of the cube, I just shift click middle mouse wheel until that point's on there. And now I'm rotating around that point. So it's, it's kind of like a 3D cursor in Blender, if you've ever used that. Okay, so um, I want a front orthogonal perspective. So in Blender, you would use your numpad for that. In Fusion 360, you got this cube up here, and this is really convenient. So I'm going to go into front view mode. So I'm going to click front. And now I'm going to middle mouse wheel so it's um, right in front of me. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch a face into the front of my model. Um, so to do that, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click create sketch and then you can either select one of these uh, origin faces again or you can actually click on the cube. So I'm going to actually put the sketch directly on the face of the cube. Um, next to begin making my cute little face I'm going to click here where it says line. This is uh, deceptively useful. It's not just lines that it makes, it makes uh, polygons, um, arch, arcs and things like that. It's really great. It's sort of like a multi-purpose uh, drawing tool. So I'm going to start with the mouth and I'm going to think like if I was cutting this out with a knife, I couldn't really get circles anyways. So um, eyes would usually be like triangles. So I'm going to do a click and a click and a click. And I'm looking at this angle now and make sure that it's less than uh, 45 degrees because that's the, the rule for 3D printing. And now when I'm done, I have a triangle. Now let's say I want the triangles to be the same on both sides, so that it's symmetrical. Um, now I need to be able to select that triangle and then duplicate it, so let's do that. So right click to uh, get, pull up this menu and then click undo and that cancels the operation, it says you're done. And now I'm going to select this, so to select you um, click and drag to do a box select. If you're not in box select you can go over here and then pick that from these uh, few choices. Uh, paint selection is really nice. Uh, for when you're working with sketches and you're trying to select your different parts of the sketch. Uh, so I'm going to use paint selection tool. Or I could do the box, but paint selection is nice. I'm going to select this triangle. It's blue, so it's highlighted. 
notice that's not the triangle, there is a triangle. So it's really convenient for things that complement each other. Um, so now that I have it selected, I'm going to right click on it and click move copy. And I'm going to cancel. Okay, try again. Click on it, right click, move copy. I don't think that works like that in sketches. I think you can copy whole things, but let's try control C, control V. No. So you can copy bodies apparently, but not. Let's try that now. Oh, I gotta select them. There we go. Alright. Derpider. Okay, so now I select the triangle. So now I um, click create copy, and now when I drag this out, it copies it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it mm, about however far I want it away from the other one. Let's just make it 25 so it's even. And then click OK. And then we're going to do the same thing again, but we're going to do a different operation. So you select the three, right click, move copy. But instead of clicking create copy because um, we're, we already have two eyes, right? Um, now we're going to switch to rotate. So I'm going to go over here and click rotate. And now it says select the axis. What we're looking for is actually um, this axis here, which is the, the vertical, right? We're going to rotate it around the vertical axis. And then for angle, I'm going to put 180. Now that moves it over here because that's how geometry works. But if I select them again, move copy, now I bring it over. And I can bring in those eyes into position where I want them. So now that my eyes there uh, looks good. It's the distance I want it. I hit enter. And now I'm going to move these three eyes together. Position them in the middle of the cube. Hit enter. Okay, so uh, now I want a mouth. And to do something a little bit cool that Fusion can do, I'm going to use a slot for the mouth. So to create a slot, which is really nice if you're designing uh, vents or something like that, you go under Sketch, and you get all of these cool options. Now, slot is right here. And I like the center to center slot. Um, basically, you say point here, point here, and then you say how wide you want the slot to be, and it makes a nice uh, circular oval shape thing. Um, these work with 3D printing. Uh, it's kind of problematic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do slots, and I'm going to do it uh, horizontal, so it's like like a, the mouth is stitched shut, kind of. So I'm going to go to slot, center to center slot, and I'm going to do some j jagged kind of slot things down here. Um, so like this, and then it tells me to drag it out. I'm just going to drag it out two every time. So I press new on my two on my numpad and I hit enter. And then I'm going to right click and now say repeat center to center. So if you get that right click menu, it, it has an option um, when you gesture up to repeat what you just did. So click, drag up, you repeat it. So um, repeat, click, drag, two, enter right click, repeat, click, drag, two, enter, right click, repeat, click, drag, drag out, two, enter, oops, didn't work, let's try again, click, drag, bring it out, two, enter, all right, um, I'm going to do maybe two more, yeah, one down and then one up again, so right click, here, click, down, drag, to, enter. If you move your mouse after you do, you uh, put in the two, it'll get rid of it. So I'm going to do one a little higher here because maybe smaller too. Uh, bring out two. There we go. Now, I think a little angry eyes would be nice. So I think I'm going to do a 45 degree slot up top for angry eyes. So a uh, slot, and it looks like I do these uh, arcs. They look really cool, uh, but let's do that. So um, let's do eye angry eyebrows. So click, 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 and then Yeah, that looks kind of cool. <laughs> sort of dorky, but 
Uh, I like it. And then we'll go uh, another three point arc slot and let's go. And two again. Now you can play with these points after you create them. So I'm going to just. Now remember that overhang rule? Uh, yeah. So these are pretty small little slots, so as long as they're not too wide, they'll be okay, uh, but they got to be perfectly vertical, so I don't know. Maybe the slots aren't a good idea for this. So let's just control Z to go past those. Look at all those controls. Look at all those undos we can do. It's a lot of undo. Um, the the slot was a good idea, but without the support, I, I don't see it working very well. Oh well, it was a nice idea. These ones will work great, and the uh, eyes will work fine. Um, so uh, I'm just looking at that now. It looks kind of awful, so I'm going to just move, move that one a little bit. See, so uh, go ahead and, and make sure they're where you want them. Okay. So now that I got my little stitched face thing, uh, pretty much where I want it. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to cut the. Um, I need to uh, cut the, the face parts through the pumpkin. Now, I could do this a lot of different ways, uh, but I think what's going to work best for me is actually uh, turning the cube into a shell and then cutting through. So that way there's a thickness to the wall before we cut through. So to do this, um, you can click Stop Sketch now. What this does is it allows you to go back to the environment we were in before uh, where we're interacting with the whole 3D object. So I click stop sketch and now we're working with bodies. So now I'm going to select this body. I'm going to go and I don't know if you need it selected first or not. I don't know. I'm going to click uh, modify and I'm going to go shell. And what shell does is it says, okay, we're going to now put all, turn all these faces into walls. And I want the walls to be two millimeters thick. So just press in two and hit enter. And there we go. Now it has all those faces and now we can cut into this. So to cut into it, you just click and hold shift to click multiple things. And um, you just want to click all these faces that you're going to cut in like that. And now if you right click, you now can extrude. Now if, um, for future reference, when you select a bunch of things and you right click, the right click menu basically tells you what you can do with those things. So good to know, right? So now I'm going to click extrude. Now extruding can bump out or it can bump in. Okay, so and it's on whatever plane you are. So if you're at an angle like this and you go to extrude out, it's going to come out an angle from that plane. So um, I got those selected. Um, I could bump out and I'd get that shape, but that's not really a jack lantern. Uh, we need to cut through. So I'm going to go back like that. And if you look pretty carefully at what you're doing here. Computer slowing down. You see the little outline of the wall that you're cutting through. So that's perfect. That's what we want. So I'll just hit enter. And now those shapes are cut into the side of my box. Now it would be nice to have a stem on the pumpkin um, at like a 45 degree angle, something kind of stressful, you know, to 3D print. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cylinder and I'm going to tip it uh, 45 degrees. Okay. So Let's go into here and say, uh, well, no, let's sketch at the top and then extrude it. And then, yeah, that would be cool. So click the top and then click plus sketch. And now I'm going to create a circle center diameter right in the middle. So I'll click in about the middle and I'll bring it out maybe five millimeters like that. That's all I need for the sketch because I just want it to be a circle. So I hit stop. Now I'm going to select this circle and I'm going to do something a little fancy. I can get you. There we are. Um, when I hit 
uh, instead of right clicking, I'm going to press E on my keyboard. It's just like Blender. It's got a shortcut E in, in a sketch, uh, or when you're in the when you're in the mode where you're interacting with the bodies, uh, if you press E, you can extrude a shortcut. It's pretty nice. I want to keep this a new body because I want it to be separate. Uh, I want it to be separate from the from the pumpkin so I can boolean it at a cool angle, maybe. So I'm just gonna uh, leave that as new body. And then for taper angle, I'm gonna say 45 degrees. Okay, and then watch what happens when I extrude. See how it comes out? Now, um, that's really extreme. Uh, it would be able to print theoretically, but it's a little extreme. I don't necessarily need that. It looks, doesn't look really stylized, it just looks weird. Um, so let's turn that down to maybe 20 degrees. And that looks pretty good, but let's try 15. Uh, let's try 10. I like that. I, it's like just barely big enough to notice what it is. Okay. Um, but let's do that again. Um, let's do 10 degrees. And how tall do we want this to be? So it's already 50, and if let's say we want 75, then that's another uh, 25 to go. So uh, let's try 25. It's a little too much um, with that angle. Let's try turning it down. Yeah, and then with a little bit more angle added, because it's only 5 degrees right now, um, I should be able to rotate, in theory, 40 degrees to the right. So let's do that. Uh, so it's 5 right now. Let's just hit enter. Okay, now select this object, right click, move, copy, and we're going to turn it uh, 40 degrees. In theory, um, that should be able to print. But I like. Ooh, do you see how the top stays flat? I think if I selected that top face. What well, looks better? I think it looks better without the top selected. So I'm just going to do that. Instead of going 45, I'm going to keep it there. All right, so um, that looks pretty good for the stem. Now, um, this is going to be really difficult to 3D print, uh, especially because this is such a sharp edge. So one thing you can do to help things print better is add chamfers or fillets and things like that to kind of smooth the corner a little bit. So I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to um, mouse over this line until it goes dark, and then it'll select it. And if I right click, say fillet, and then bring this in by, ooh, just half a millimeter looks pretty darn good. Um, that's probably good enough. I'm going to hit okay and that's done and then do the same thing down here I'm gonna click that and then right click fill it and just add a little bit of that there we go um, for this shape you do the same thing actually uh, I think if we just click everything it'll do it do the whole thing though no too much at once Undo. Let's uh, let's just select them. Oh, by the way, if you can't see those inside lines, uh, that's because I have the display style changed to uh, shaded with hidden faces. Um, shaded with hidden faces, I, I really like. Um, it's right here. So you go display settings, visual style, shaded with hidden edges. It works really good. And then I'll right click and say fill it. And 0.5 looks pretty good. Um, you're not really trying to make that side round, but yeah, that looks pretty good. I'll leave that. I'll do that. Now the eye holes, I'm thinking I might keep sharp because then they're more recognizable as triangles. Um, but notice it did a fillet on that corner anyways. So 
Might as well do them all. If anything, this is a good exercise in selecting things. Um, so most of your time you spend in fusion will be, if you're doing this sort of thing, you're going to spend a lot of time just selecting faces. So if you get better about using those selection tools than me, then you'll work, be able to work a lot faster probably. Um, if you ever need to deselect something, you just hold shift and select it again. And uh, notice I'm just selecting the edges. I'm not trying to get the face. So if the face lights up, um, I just move on with my mouse. I don't click those. Okay, I think I got all of them. Oh, nope. Spoke too soon. Okay, that's all of them, I think. Now I'm going to right-click, repeat, fill it, and let's bring it. And it gives me a warning when you won't go too high on the fillet. Uh, so just do that. There we go. Hit OK. By the way, um, this what this does is it adds faces um, using this algorithm called Rolling Ball. Um, there's other... This looks like it creates... Um, n-gons which is okay for some types of modeling but quads are generally better you know four sides so it looks like rolling ball method gives you the quad so I'll use that okay so now our little jack-o-lantern is done now there was a suggestion that maybe we can put an LED light or something in here so um, this is a good idea I don't have LED lights but just let's set it up let's put a 10 millimeter hole in the bottom because, well, why not, right? So, um, yeah, let's do that. 10 millimeter hole in the bottom. Oh, and I got to show you how to um, cut, uh, print this thing in two parts so that you can, uh, you know, print it separately and then put it together. Uh, so I'm going to cut a circle into the bottom. So I got this, I'm gonna hit plus, sketch, circle, center, circle. Uh, this should be our center, and let's make it 10 millimeters just to have it a wide opening for, for that. Click stop sketch. And then I'm gonna click this, and I'm gonna press E, like I showed you, that shortcut is so cool. I'm just gonna bring it up four and hit okay. And now I got two faces, shift click both of them, right click, fill it, and then bring it in. There we go. Um, so that little hole's in there. Now for 3D printing. So this right now um, is close to 3D printable depending on the size of things. Um, Generally, that's a large amount of bridging. Um, if it's 50 millimeters, that's like five centimeters wide. So um, it's like it's like that wide. That's not going to be possible uh, 3D printing. However, um, if if you know the ways of of way 3D prints work, you could actually do some some things to make this possible. And I'm gonna um, add. I could, I, I'm going to show you some different strategies. So one strategy might be to cut this thing straight down the middle and then glue it together. Um, that would be a little messy and you'd have a seam down the middle and that's not ideal. Um, another thing you do is just design this uh, as a actual uh, sphere. Uh, have, have it be round on top. Um, rounding it on top would probably eliminate a lot of your problems. Um, and uh, just looking at the design, I think that would almost be uh, what I want to do. Um, but I am a fond, uh, I'm, a, I'm a, f a fan of doing the difficult thing. So um, I'm going to make bridges inside of my pumpkin. And these bridges are just going to come in and they're going to um, create a arch so that it can print. Uh, and I'm going to repeat this arch like 
five times because it's supposed to be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it's 50 wide. So I'm going to do these every 10 millimeters. And that will give me uh, plenty of support for the roof of my thing. So I'm going to do this and it's going to be awesome. So go in front view, go create sketch, uh, select here. I need to now draw this arch. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to click where I want the arch to start. So I want the arch to start uh, halfway and then I'm going to, uh, I think the way you do it is you click where your first point is and then you hold the mouse down and then you go to the other spot and I'm going a little inside the wall and that's fine actually I want to be make sure it's even so I guess I'll go that outside wall or inside wall mm, difficult decision I'm gonna click on the middle line I'm going to click a middle line there and then I'm going to click and well, let's just do a circle. Yeah, circle is a good idea. Sketch, circle, let's try putting a circle in the middle now. And then have that circle pretty much line up there. Oh, let's just type in 50. There we go. And if you look, uh, it already has these shapes in here. And these are the shapes we want. Um, these are our uh, support triangle shapes. So this basically is an arch now of the whole thing. And when it gets to the top, it should be able to bridge that. It's close. OK, so now I can stop the sketch. Now I still have these uh, little triangle pieces uh, highlighted. And now I'm going to hit E, and I'm going to bring them over uh, two millimeters, I think, uh, this way. Let's bring them over like that, two. Uh, so negative two, if you want to stretch them that way. And change it from cut to new body. And then hit Enter. So now you get a third object. OK, so uh, body one, body two, body three. So um, th let's rename these. So just do a slow double click. Support one, slow double click, support two, and then let's give this a name, pumpkin, pumpkin, some people call them pumpkins, I call them pumpkins because I'm not weird. Okay, so uh, let's right click, move, and move these uh, 10 millimeters that way. Hit enter. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I want to build um, one because I got already over 10, so I need to go another one, two, probably. So I'm going to use a uh, array, basically, uh, in Blender Lango. So I'm going to go under Sketch, or no, Create uh, Pattern, Rectangular Pattern. And I'm going to say I'm going to create three of these things at 10. And I'm going to oh it needs a direction so uh, I'm just going to select this y-axis and then drag it out like that there we go and if I put this distance uh, as 30 yeah that's perfect uh, hit enter and it just puts these things in there now I think I can bridge that. So um, that looks pretty good. Now I have all these supports and now I need to connect them to the to the pumpkin so that it can print the support. So I'm going to uh, first select pumpkin and now I need to use a combine operation. So I go under modify combine and now where it says tool bodies I'm going to click here and then uh, select all these. There should be one, two, three, four, five selected or six selected. And then six selected says there. So I click join. Uh, it's got the pumpkin visible. Everything should be okay. If you don't want the support structures to be combined totally, 
you can keep a duplicate of it by selecting new tools or keep tools, but I'm just going to hit OK. Give it a second because it has some math to do. And then boom, it's done. So um, my model is finished and I believe uh, this will 3D print. Um, I'm noticing I probably could have put uh, some chamfer or something on there, but I'm gonna try to print this. So tomorrow morning when uh, I should have this printed out and you'll be able to look at it and uh, we can, you can then watch this video and try to make your own pumpkin. So I look forward to seeing these pumpkins if you're doing Fusion 360 um, this October and uh, I guess I'll see you in class. Uh, thank you very much for watching.